Hi kids, am I audible to you all? Hi everyone, am I audible to you all? Please let me know in the chat section, all of you, am I audible? Am I perfectly visible to you all? Hi. Guys, please tell me, am I perfectly audible or visible? So, hey you guys, welcome to Unacademy Neat English. I'm Yoma. I am your biology educator, Ambika Sharma. And today, we are going to study the top five concepts of botany. And yes, these topics are very important. From each topic, you guys can expect two questions in the paper. Okay, so today we will be talking about the electron transport chain, we will discuss scrap cycle, we will talk about the lack of parent, the sewage treatment, uh, water potential. So, all these topics we are going to practice today. So, are you guys ready for the session? Tell me in the chat section, guys. Are you people ready for the session? Yes. Are you guys ready for the session? So, quickly like this video, do share this video and do subscribe our channel guys. And yesterday we took a wonderful session in which we discussed the most predicted NEET paper. So, PDF I will share after this particular session. I will share the PDF of this particular session and of that uh, question wala session. Okay. Okay. Ha Shyam, but this topic is a very good topic na. Top 5 concepts of botany. Let's practice these topics and tomorrow we will be discussing the reproduction unit and yes, there is a surprise for you and we are going to reveal it soon. Okay, we are going to uh, reveal it soon. So, are you people excited for the session? Tell me quickly in the chat section. See, so many students are watching this session but the number of likes are quite less. So, quickly like the session as well. Thank you so much. That cat fight. Ah. You know, HSP sir, he always support Vaseem. Always. He always support Vaseem. Hannah, that is bad. Did you check that session? That cat fight? Most of the time, he is going to support Vaseem. So, only, you know, only Shreya sir, only our Capto, he helps me always. Yes. Chalo. So, without wasting time, let's start the session, guys. So, as I said, we are going to discuss the top concepts of botany and we will start with the gene expression. So, firstly, tell me in the chat section, what do you know about a gene? What do you know about a gene? Let's start from the basics, okay? Whatever you know about a gene, just type it in the chat section quickly and I want all of you to revert, okay? What do you know about a gene? Anything, anything. See, we know that DNA, the genetic material, right? The very important thing because this DNA is having the information that is required for the functioning of a cell, for the functioning of a body. So, when you talk about the gene, it is that basic unit of inheritance, right? We know that in simple words, if I have to say, so you know that the gene is present on the DNA and it is the basic unit of heredity. Now, here I am going to compare the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. I will tell you why. Listen to me very carefully. Whatever points I am going to discuss today, they are very important for your exam. Trust me, they are very, very, very important for your exam. So, kindly listen to me very carefully. So, see, I am going to compare prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell today, okay? What will I compare? I will compare prokaryotic cell today and eukaryotic cell today. No doubt we are discussing the gene expression, but in this way, you will be able to relate it in a better way. So, when you talk about the prokaryotic cell, you know that the genetic material is directly there in the cytoplasm, isn't it? Whenever we discuss the prokaryotic cell, we know that the genetic material is directly there in the cytoplasm. There is no nucleus at all and we used to call it nucleoid the naked DNA, which is devoid of histone proteins, isn't it? Now come to the eukaryotic cell. When you talk about a eukaryotic cell, you know it very well that genetic material, the DNA, it is present within the nucleus, right? So, the very first point here is, when we talk about the central dogma of information, you know that DNA is going to form the mRNA, mRNA is going to form the proteins, isn't it? Very famous question. It's a very famous question. DNA is going to form the mRNA and mRNA is going to form the proteins. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, formation of mRNA from DNA 
it is known as transcription and mRNA to protein is known as translation, isn't it? Now, when you look at a prokaryotic cell, in a prokaryotic cell, because the genetic material is directly there in the cytoplasm, so 110%, the transcription and translation both will be there in the cytoplasm, yes or no? Quickly type it in the chat section, all of you just revert it in the chat section. Both the transcription and even the translation, it will take place within the cytoplasm, of course. It's a yes. Now, when we look at a eukaryotic cell, so when it comes to the transcription, okay, when it comes to the transcription, it will take place within the nucleus and when you people talk about the translation, it will be there in the cytoplasm, right? It will be there in the cytoplasm. Both these things are important. Now, you must be thinking, okay, ma'am, why are you telling this? Because, now again, compare. When you talk about prokaryotes, if you want to control the expression of a gene, because ultimately it is the gene uh, which is responsible, uh, genes, these are responsible for the characters, right? right? So, in the case of prokaryotes, if we want to control the expression of a gene, controlling gene expression means this translation wala part. Okay, this translation wala part. So, in the case of prokaryotes, majorly we can regulate that gene expression at the level of transcription okay at the level of transcription we are going to we are going to regulate the level of the uh, regulate the level of gene expression but when you talk about the eukaryotic cell even at the level of transcription even at the level of rna processing even at the level of translation you guys can control it so the very first point clear tell me very first point clear quickly in the chat section just let me know so today we are going to talk about the gene expression in the case of prokaryotic cell and the best example for it is the lac operon and fine for sure you people will get a question from this particular topic in your exam mark my words you are definitely going to get question from this particular part in your paper right so now we will be discussing the we will be discussing the lac operon okay first point clear now see the ncrt okay so regulation of gene expression means it is a very broad term that may occur at a various levels so here you can see in eukaryotes it can occur at the level of transcription at the level of processing as i said at the level of transport of mrna from nucleus to cytoplasm and at the level of translation okay okay so here we are taking the example of e coli which is a bacteria which is a prokaryote now we will discuss that particular example so are you guys ready for that tell me tell me tell me in the se chat section guys are you people ready for that are you people ready for that no lack of opinion is very easy it is not at all hard i'll make it very easy for you okay fine so this is a bacteria okay the name of that bacteria is e coli just listen to the story huh? story is very interesting usually this e coli it feeds on glucose Okay, for its energy, it feeds on glucose and we know that glucose is a monosaccharide, it's a monomer, isn't it? Glucose is what? It is a monosaccharide, it's a monomer, okay, it's a monomer. So, normally, uh, whenever E. coli wants some energy, glucose is available. Now, what is happening? Let's say E. coli is present in a medium and in that medium, the glucose is not there, but instead of glucose, the lactose is present. Okay, the lactose is present. Now, what you need to know about these lactose? This lactose is a disaccharide, kids. What is it? It is a disaccharide. Can you tell me the meaning of disaccharide? Yes, everyone. Can you please tell me the meaning of disaccharide? Di, di means two. Saccharide means sugar. So, it is made up of two monosaccharides. It is made up of two monosaccharides, right? And that two monosaccharides are glucose and galactose. Okay, glucose and galactose are you getting my point are you getting my point so normally what was happening e coli was taking the glucose for its energy now the e for to e coli the glucose is not available but lactose is available so e coli was thinking ki, if i'll start taking the lactose so i can break that lactose and i can get the glucose isn't it isn't it but this is not a usual affair right this is not the thing that e coli used to do regularly okay so e coli is having the genes E. coli is having the enzymes that can break the lactose, that can help the E. coli to digest the lactose, but it is not, it is not, you can say that switch on all the time. It is not switch on all the time. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point, guys? If it is a yes, type yes in the chat section, all of you, quick. 
all of you quick isn't it isn't it got it fine so that is why in the case of e coli the genes which will help in the digestion of lactose in the breakdown of lactose normally they are switched off by default they are switched off we need to switch it on right we need to switch it on right so the very first point is ki lac operon by default it is switched off let's say you are entering a room in that room electricity is not there the power button is not on so what will you do first of all you will switch it on isn't it you are going to switch it on isn't it of course so by default something is off and we need to switch it on so can i not say that ki lac operon is the inducible type of operon tell me quickly in the chat section can i not say that ki lac operon is the is the inducible type of operon we are going to induce the genes ki now you should start your functioning right now you should start your functioning isn't it isn't it if it is a yes type it in the chat section guys and i want to see the energy in the chat section this is a import this is a very important topic and you people will get a question in the neat exam for sure okay okay so that is why when it comes to the lac operon it is known as inducible operon because we are going to switch on the genes right we are going to switch on the genes and the another important point here is for very for the very first time it was elucidated by jacob and monard okay on e coli jacob and monard and it is even a pyq that is a previous year question okay even it is a pre, uh, previous year question now what exactly is the meaning of an operon can you tell me in the chat section all of you can you tell me in the chat section what exactly is the meaning of operon what exactly is the meaning of operon in the case of prokaryotes operon are present these operons are not present in the case of eukaryotes when it comes to the operon it is a group of genes what is it it's a group of genes what is it operon is what it's a group of genes having one regulator okay it is having one regulator or you can say that one promoter right one promoter operon it's a group of genes okay so operons are only present in the case of prokaryotes not in the case of eukaryotes and they are the group of genes so regulatory gene will be there promoter will be there operator will be there and some structural genes are there this point clear bachche this point clear tell me in the chat section quickly all of you is it clear to you yes or no yes or no see lac operon okay lac operon so as i said the elucidation of the lac operon was the result of the association between jacob and monod so this is a pyq so you really need to mark it okay so operon mein lac operon tryptophan era so many are there but in your syllabus lac operon is there so we need to discuss that so lac operon is having one regulatory gene which is denoted by i right bachche i and i here means inhibitor i here means inhibitor just mark it i here means inhibitor done bachche done three structural genes are there and that structural genes are z y and a right three structural genes are there okay now it's time to draw it so the sequence is important bachche so as i said regulatory gene it is we are going to express it with the help of this i gene right bachche so it is going to be p o right it is pipo z y a okay it is pipo z y a this is the sequence pipo z y a okay okay so i then p then o and then here we have three structural genes okay here we have three structural genes so bachche what you need to remember in this particular topic listen to me very carefully please listen to me very carefully as i said i here means inhibitor it is basically the regulatory gene having its own promoter here right having its own promoter bachche in the case of lac operon because by default it is switched off what this i gene used to form it used to form the inhibitor right this gene will form the mrna 
that mrna will form the protein and that protein is nothing but it is a repressor it is a repressor it is a kind of inhibitor it is going to stop something it cannot start something it is going to stop something now i'm going to explain a very important point please listen to me very carefully see bachche in your syllabus you have negative in your syllabus you study the negative control of inducible operon what you study in your syllabus you people study the negative control of inducible operon right negative control of inducible operon now why are we saying that it is a negative control anyone in the class do you know the meaning here why are we saying the negative control of inducible operon why why are we using the word negative control the reason behind is it's not like that ki we do not have the positive control of inducible operon we have that we have that but in your syllabus listen to me very carefully in your syllabus it is the negative control why is it so because wh why are we saying that it is the negative control because here the regulatory gene form a repressor the regulatory gene forms a repressor right it is forming a repressor that is why we use the word negative control so if i'll give you one question that a uh, regulatory gene is forming a promoter ya yeah, you can say that uh, a regulatory gene is forming an activator so what will you say at that time you will say ki there will be the whatever operon you are studying you will be saying ki it is the positive control right it is the positive control so here what do we have here why are we saying it is a negative control because this particular protein formed is a repressor now the another important question bachche this repressor is going to bind to this operator always remember jaise this is your repressor protein this repressor protein will always bind to the operator right it's a it's a switched off condition of lac operon right it's a switched off condition of lac operon are you getting my point so the operator here uh, so the repressor here it will bind to this particular operator so now when it will bind to this particular operator now it is not leaving a place to rna polymerase to bind to this promoter remember this thing okay so here you need to mark one question bachche you need to mark one point that the product of it's a pyq again the product of regulatory gene the product of regulatory gene binds to operator whatever this regulatory gene is going to form it always binds to the operator so it is the one which is going to control this entire gene expression or the regulation of gene expression so this is something very important here done bachche this is something very important here question can come from this particular part okay question can come from this particular part the very first thing second important point is always remember rna polymerase p for p p rna polymerase p so p means promoter means rna polymerase always bind to the promoter another important question it is okay anuradha okay right bachche another important question it is okay so by default this is the condition now what is going to happen now let listen to the story listen to the story all of you this e coli in this e coli some amount of lactose will enter here we know that we have a repressor we don't want this repressor to bind to the operator so we have to you know digress it we have to deviate it okay jaise sometimes you know i think you all have seen the movie three idiots isn't it isn't it you know the character silencer do you remember the character silencer tell me do you remember the character silencer from the movie 3 idiots he used to distract people na just before the exam day hai na same is the case here we need to do, we need to do the same thing here right we don't want this repressor to bind to the operator so we are going to lure him we'll be like see repressor brother don't bind to operator i'll give you one more interesting thing right you you please bind with the inducer you please bind to this inducer this inducer is more attractive better than this operator yaar leave operator you just go for inducer right same as the case jaisa hota na sometimes some boys yaar that girl is better right so they leave their girl and they they'll go to another girl something like that so here this is what we are going to do so repressor we will 
we will deviate this repressor, we will tell this repressor you are not going to bind to the operator, we will give you something more interesting, something better than operator and that is the inducer. So, the another important question here is which one is the inducer in the case of lac operon that is your lactose and actually it is allo lactose right actually it is allo lactose are you getting my point actually it is allo lactose very first point now whenever this lactose will enter inside the e coli it will bind to this receptor a repressor the repressor will become inactive the site here will be free so your rna polymerase will come and it will bind to this promoter right and the transcription here will start okay transcription and translation here will start now the next question that used to come from this particular part is what that z gene is forming what that y gene is forming and what that a gene is forming this is what we need to remember next okay okay so see this z gene is going to form beta galactosidase write down the names beta galactosidase y will form permease a will form trans acetylase are you getting my point this is another mcq okay z is going to form beta galactosidase y is going to form permease a is going to form trans acetylase but here you just need to remember one thing bachche the some expression of permease will always be there whenever you talk about the e coli always remember this permease allow the entry of the this permease allows the entry of the lactose inside the cell inside the e coli okay this permease is going to allow the entry of the entry of the lactose inside the e coli if there is no permease e coli will not get the lactose the lactose is not able to enter inside the e coli this is the very 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 important point here right this is something very 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 important very important point you really need to mark this point in the paper they can give you the question what if the y in a uh, y gene is not showing its expression permease will not form and if there is no permease there is no chance that lactose can enter within the e coli second point is sometimes students they ask me ki ma'am the operon is by default it is switched off then how lactose will enter how lactose will enter because it is going to act like an inducer so the very simple answer is ki some expression of lacto uh, some expression of permease will always be there some amount of permease is always present in the e coli okay 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 so lactose will come repressor will become inactive polymerase will come the expression of these three genes the transcription of these three genes will start you will get the enzyme beta galactosidase permease and trans acetylase so beta galactosidase so now you know that lactose it's a disaccharide okay so this beta galactosidase enzyme is the one which is going to hydrolyze this lactose into glucose plus galactose is that clear is that clear permease will allow the entry of lactose and what about trans acetylase trans acetylase is the one it basically transfers the acetyl group it is related to the detoxification that is the point that you need to remember okay okay it is related to the detoxification so up to this part all clear up to this part all clear if there is any doubt please feel free to ask feel free to ask right so this is all about this lack operon go and practice the question after the session right and if there is any doubt just type that doubt in the comment section i will definitely answer that okay okay so we have covered all the important points from this part so you can see here the repressor of the operon is synthesized from the i gene right the repressor protein binds to the operator region it prevents rna polymerase from transcribing the operon okay okay inducer here is lactose or allo lactose clear clear bachche any other doubt from this part so now answer this particular question be quick answer this particular question speed up answer this particular question then we'll start the next topic topic 1 is over and we really need to speed up now and bachche when are you going to subscribe our channel when are you going to subscribe our channel if you are new to your if you are new to our channel na please subscribe it 
right you guys are going to get the quality content everything for your need preparation on this particular channel so go and subscribe it and please tell it to your friends as well okay so genomic dna possesses functioning units a group of genes under the influence of promoters known as operons okay next basic tool of genetic regulation are the ability of some proteins to bind to specific to bind to specific yes quick 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 okay so the correct answer here is regulatory regulatory dna sequence next in the regulation of gene expression this is an incorrect statement this is an incorrect statement so what should be the correct answer here in the bacteria it permits to regulate replicate with no control in the bacteria it permits to adapt to changing environment permits the maintenance of the homeostasis in multicellular entities the functioning of multicellular entities on the whole this is an incorrect statement of course here the correct incorrect statement that regulation of gene expression this is an incorrect statement in the bacteria it permits to replicate with no control no it's not like that regulation of gene expression we are going to regulate the expression of a gene we are going to control it okay overall bachche this gene expression is going to maintain homeostasis do you understand homeostasis the the constant internal environment the constant internal environment right it is obviously that that will be maintained because we are capable of regulating our gene expression okay so ultimately it is the a and what is the doubt in the last question basic tool of genetic regulation are the ability of some proteins to bind to specific regulatory dna sequences of course ultimately here in the genetic uh, regulation yeah in the gene regulation what we want enzymes that enzymes need to bind to their specific a uh, position or they need to bind to the specific position so here they are talking about that chale so now the next topic is the pedigree analysis it is from the genetics now you know that when it comes to the pedigree analysis this pedigree is not that dog meal right you know that pedigree analysis right here we are going to make a chart actually with the help of this pedigree analysis we can trace we can trace a particular trait right we can trace a particular trait right we can check that how the trait will pass from generations to generations generations to generations right okay okay this is what pedigree analysis is so some chart like this will be formed okay so we are going to check the inheritance of a particular trait that how the trait is passing from one generation to another is it an autosomal dominant trait or autosomal recessive trait or x link dominant or recessive traits like this okay like this so majorly we discuss the inheritance of hemophilia majorly i am saying even the color blindness okay and whatever is given in ncrt we need to cover that so to the point we are going to discuss that so you know that for the formation of these pedigree chart right we need to know about few symbols okay so here we go this is from the ncrt only so if you want to if you want to denote the male then there will be a square like this if you want to denote the female then there will be a circle and if that circle is fully filled like this right so it is showing that female is having that particular character female is having that particular trait so majorly in your syllabus we talk about the disease we talk about the disorders okay so male female and here if the shape is like this the sex is unspecified and if they are colored right they are like this so it is indicating that that particular individual is having that trait that particular individual is affected with that trait okay bachche and this particular sign is showing mating right they are having the mating now if i'm drawing it like this so it is showing the next generation jaise here i can say that ki they are the parents and that is the generation 1 so can we say that ki in generation 1 both the both the children they are daughter both the children they are daughter hai na we can say that now see 
if it is like that now this is going to be the third generation okay third generation so you can see that or if there is a double line here so it is showing consanguineous marriage means marriage between the relatives marriage between the cousins right like this okay like this so see this is important you can get one question from this particular part okay guys okay done and next you can see here this is showing that uh, uh, all that generation the affected individual that's all that's all so for pedigree analysis whatever symbols are given in ncrt they are more than sufficient now the next thing that we need to understand how can we say that that one character is autosomal dominant another character is x linked dominant or recessive what are the criteria so i'm going to share few points bachche you just need to remember that points and you will be able to solve all the questions right that used to come from this particular part okay so now please listen to me carefully note down these points and if you are not able to note down kindly right kindly check the pdf i'll share it later right i'll share it later but for that you need to be consistent ha huh? i'm going to share it in our telegram channel you people can join that fine fine so can we start can we start but guys your energy is quite low you people are neat aspirant on 7th of may you guys are having the exam but the responses in the charts they are quite less literally they are quite less we have so many students right first of all share this video with your friends as well and let them know the top 5 botany topics we are discussing be the part of this discussion right you will get an idea about the competition as well and subscribe our channel literally subscribe our channel you have you have supported us and we want more support we really want to guide ne 2024 aspirants we want to guide ne 2025 aspirants and for that literally students we need your love and support we are already getting it and we are we are so grateful for that but thoda aur thoda aur yes that type of energy i want to see in the chat section right that type of energy i want to see in the chat section now come back to the topic so this is about the pedigree analysis now bachche first of all we are going to study the autosomal dominant and recessive traits i'll explain these terms and as per your syllabus i'm saying x linked dominant and recessive see bachche it is the basic gen genetics dominant which is going to express itself recessive which will not so what type of genotype what type of genotype will be dominating you know that if both the both the alleles are in capitals they are showing homozygous dominant condition if one is in capital another is in small again it is showing heterozygous dominant genotype in both the cases in both the cases the character is going to express itself the character is going to express itself now come to the recessive one here both the alleles need to be in small letters both the alleles need to be recessive are you getting my point here both the alleles need to be recessive isn't it isn't it okay isn't it are you getting my point now the another thing is what is the meaning of autosomal and x linked see it's very simple you know that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes isn't it all of you know that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes so bachche out of that 22 pairs are autosomes they are normal body chromosomes which control other character but one pair one pair we call it as allosomes allosome this pair is allosome it is going to control the sex of that individual whether that individual is male or the female for female it is double x for male it is xy for male it is xy so if any trait that we are, we are tracing okay if any trait that we are tracing if that trait is present on this x chromosome if any trait that we are tracing if that trait is present if that character is present on this x chromosome so we will be using the word x linked inheritance isn't it x linked inheritance so if any trait uh, if any trait which is present on you know other body chromosomes other than these sex chromosomes then we use the word autosomal okay then we use the word autosomal is that clear then we use the word autosomal so if it is x linked dominant character uh, let's say if there is any character which is 
X linked dominant. So, it means the gene for that particular character is present on the X chromosome and if it is the dominant trait, so it will be like this. If any of the X chromosome, if any of the X chromosome is getting allele for that particular character, that character will express itself. So, these two points clear? These two points clear? Sure? Sure? So, now can we come to the points, can we come to the points that you need to remember to solve the pedigree, yes or no? Can we discuss that? Guys, energy, energy, it's missing in chat box again. All of you, you all need to be very attentive. The energy is still missing in the chat section, guys. I want to see the energy in the chat section. Yes? So, can we talk about that conditions? Can we talk about that conditions? And if you know these conditions now, trust me, all the pedigree analysis based questions are going to be very easy for all of you. Okay? Okay? That, that fire emojis, you know. Too good. Okay. Now, the very first condition that you all need to remember is, very first condition. If you know about it, na, then your 50 percent of the question will be solved. 50 percent of the part you will cover. Okay, the word is dominant, the word is recessive. The word is dominant, the word is recessive. See, any character which is dominant, it will never skip generation. It will never skip generation. Guys, it is very, very, very important. It will never skip generation. When it is recessive, it will always skip generation. It will always skip generation. Are you getting my point? Never skip generation, always skip generation. Key word, key point it is. It's a key point guys. Never skip generation, always skip generation. Never skip generation, always skip generation. What is the meaning of not skipping the generation? Here, see, if there is any dominant trait that we are tracing, if see, it is present in any of the parent, then definitely in next generation, in next progeny, you will see that trait. You will see that trait. Means in the case of dominant traits, na, in the case of dominant characters, if parents are affected, listen to me very carefully, if parents are affected, definitely, definitely the next generation will be affected. Any of the individual from next generation will be affected for sure. So, here we, I can say that now, if any individual is having the, if any uh, individual is having the dominant trait, so obviously parents are also having that character. Parents are all, uh, uh, parents will also have that character, obviously. Now, here you can see, if the character is recessive, then there are chances, bache. Just a minute. See, if this is the scenario, it is clearly indicating that this individual is affected, but its parents are normal. So, it is indicating that it is a recessive trait. Right now, I am not telling you about the uh, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive. No, I am telling you the general points. On the basis of that, you can uh, check that whether that trait is dominant or recessive. That's all. Okay. So, here you can see if, if, uh, uh, if progeny, if children, they are having the trait, if the child is having the trait, but parents are normal, so it is indicating it is a recessive generation, it is a recessive trait because they have skipped the generation, okay? They have skipped the generation, come to these points, come to these points, just check it. See, when you are talking about the autosomal dominant trait, right, these points are extra, I will highlight right i'll highlight the important points you just need uh, you just note down that okay so autosomal dominant the word is autosomal dominant so here bachche you can see in autosomal dominant one important point is generation will never be skipped and male and female if it is autosomal dominant male and female are equally likely to be affected if it is autosomal dominant you cannot say Ki males are more prominent, females are less. No, both of them are equally prominent. Both of them are equally prominent. Secondly, affected offspring have at least one affected parent. Means, just look at this pedigree chart. 
one female is affected in next generation in next generation you will see the progeny is affected in next generation here also if you only one parent is affected still in next generation you will find that trait so the generation is not skipped generation is not skipped here okay okay guys okay and affected offsprings are heterozygous if only one parent is affected it's a very wonderful condition bache you can get direct you can get mcq from this part if out, see out of these two parents out of these two parents only one parent is having that dominant trait so in the next generation you can see this particular girl is having the trait but here the genotype is going to be the heterozygous it is not homozygous so let's say i'm giving you one question ki there is the inheritance of uh, in uh, you have to see the inheritance pattern of autosomal dominant trait both the parents are affected and in the next generation their child is also affected so what will be the possible genotype of that child right what are you going to say what will be the possible genotype of that child tell me tell me tell me tell me quickly tell me tell me quickly what should be the answer what should be the answer tell me what should be the answer quickly quickly all of you what should be the answer definitely hairy bache it will be homozygous dominant it will be homozygous dominant so in autosomal dominant trait if one parent is affected then obviously in the next generation uh, if any individual if any child is affected that will have heterozygous dominant trait okay a heterozygous dominant genotype now unaffected offsprings are homozygous recessive that we know so if only one parent is heterozygous na 50% of the offspring will be affected that's all so you need to focus on these two points they do not skip the generation male and female male and female are uh, they both are equally likely to be affected third point is affected offspring have at least one affected parent done done bachche now come to the autosomal recessive trait so when it is the autosomal recessive bachche you know that only in the homozygous recessive condition any recessive trait express itself don't you know that don't you know that only in the homozygous right if any trait is recessive then only in the homozygous recessive condition it will be able to express itself it will be able to express itself this is what you need to keep in your head okay okay so here if this is the genotype then definitely definitely that character will express itself but if it is the genotype then obviously then obviously that recessive trait will not express itself so the very first point here is this trait often skips generation very important point it's the most important point okay it is the most important point theek hai clear is that clear tell me quickly is that clear tell me quickly quickly tell me be quick guys all of you done done okay most important point okay so males and because see whenever the word is autosomal character autosomal dominant autosomal recessive male and female both are equally likely to be affected both are equally likely to be affected keyword right because in the x linked dominant and recessive these conditions will not be there so here you can see affected offspring often have unaffected parents bachche right rajni right sahil right harry chris yes bachche is that clear this is a very important point so in the case of autosomal dominant if one individual is affected definitely that individual will have affected parents but in the case of recessive trait if one individual is having that particular character it, it it is not mandatory that parents are also affected so this line is very important that affected offspring often have unaffected parents affected offspring often have unaffected parents right right bachche and unaffected parents of affected offsprings they are also heterozygous right they are also heterozygous is that clear so this is about the autosomal dominant and recessive and trust me after the class just check it out once just check it out once literally you will be able to solve the question guys because pedigree analysis is such a such an easy topic you don't know these points so you are not able to solve the question 
So what is the first point that we need to remember? Generation skip. What is the second point that we need to remember? That we need to remember that if it is the autosomal character, male and female both are having the equal chances to get affected. But if it is the X-linked, dominant or recessive, then what is going to happen? It is dominant. So one condition is again same. Generation will not be skipped. But, 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 but. If it is X-linked dominant, again, again male and females are equally likely to be affected. Why? Because in the case of males, it is XY. So, if it is X linked trait, X will have that particular allele, definitely it will express. And in the case of females, we know that there are two X. So, again, if it is a dominant trait, if any of the X, if any of the X will get that allele, definitely the character will express because the dominant can express itself in AA form as well as in AA form. So, if there is any doubt, please ask it in the chat section. Tell me, any doubt from this part? Yes, bache. ratio, how to calculate the ratio using Punnett square, then I will definitely answer it. Let me finish this. Is that clear? Sure? Sure? Then who is going to like our video? Likes are quite less, bache. I see your target is 500 plus likes. Your target is 500 plus likes. Okay. And this is your target 500 plus likes and subscribe our channel as well huh? subscribe our channel done no doubts okay let's go so affected son always have affected mother can you tell me why can you tell me why affected son always have affected mother can you tell me why because but see female is xx male is xy so in in the case of their son, X will be contributed by mother, Y will be contributed by father, right? So, always remember when it is a dominant trait, right, that if it is a dominant trait, if the son is having that dominant trait, then definitely the mother is having that character also, right? Right? Because mother is going to pass the X chromosome to his, to her uh, son, okay? Okay? Then last one. Huh, X linked recessive. So, again, generation will be skipped, right? Generation will be skipped, but here males are affected more frequently than the females. This is the important MCQ. Males are affected uh, more, uh, males will be affected more than the females. Why? Because in the case of males, there is only one X chromosome. So, if that one X chromosome is having that defected allele, definitely the character will express itself. Okay, definitely the character will express itself. Done. And here the females are going to be the carriers. Just you know that the best example is the hemophilia. In the case of hemophilia, if one X, if in the case of female, one X is having that defected allele, then female will become the carrier. Right? The female will become the carrier. She is not having that disease, but she is the carrier. She can pass it to, to, to the next generation. Okay? She can pass it to the next generation is that clear is that clear so trait is never passed from father to son can you explain how can you explain how why in the case of x linked recessive trait the trait is never passed from father to son anyone in the chat anyone in the chat who can answer this anyone trait is never passed from father to son trait is never passed from father to son Very good, bache, Reshma, because bache, father is going to pass, if it is the X-linked recessive trait, father is only going to pass the Y to his son. Okay, Y to his son, that is why, that is why. But female means mother, mother can, uh, mother can even pass it to the son or she can even pass it to the daughter because mother is homogametic, mother is homogametic, clear, clear? Done. So, affected sons are usually born to carrier mothers and 50% of the sons of a carrier mother will be affected. Obviously, it is understood. Done. So, if there is any doubt from this part, do let me know. Achi. Do let me know in the chat section. Now, come to this part from NCRT. So, although it is written here, but still you guys can check. See, 
mother is affected in next generation if you will see son and daughter are affected so now here if you will see the daughter is affected she is getting married to a normal man but still in the next generation they will find this trait so you can say that ki generation is not skipped generation is not skipped this is how you need to check the pedigree chart moreover here parents both the parents are, are normal so in their next generation their children are also fine right their children are also fine so this condition is again fulfilled that unaffected individuals are having unaffected parents simple as that so it is dominant trait right it is dominant trait so this example is of myotonic dystrophy bachche autosomal dominant trait so this question can be asked in the neat exam you can put important over it okay so myotonic dystrophy is the example of autosomal dominant trait so they can ask you this question in uh, this way also ki write down the uh, yeah out of the following which one is the example of autosomal dominant trait or they can just give you this particular pedigree chart and they can ask you this pedigree chart is for an autosomal dominant disorder or autosomal recessive disorder is that clear is that clear now just look at it see both the parents are normal but in the next generation children they are having the disease means affected individuals are having unaffected parents matlab generation is skipped so obviously recessive trait it is isn't it here also parents are normal next generation is showing the character okay so this particular example is of autosomal recessive trait that is your sickle cell anemia again it is also a pyq so in both the ways this question can be asked okay now answer this question bachche answer this question quickly answer this question then we'll start our third concept that is very easy that is very easy and you have to solve you have to solve minimum 10 questions okay you have to solve minimum 10 questions answer it answer it kids quickly quickly all of you answer the question first of all first of all you have to check whether it is dominant or recessive just look at this pedigree chart bachche see parents are having disease in the next generation they are having the character but if you will look at this particular part see parents are normal next generation is showing the character here parents are having the character next generation is not showing it matlab generation is skipped so definitely it is not dominant cancel b and c eliminate these two options eliminate these two option now the next part is ki whether it is autosomal recessive and x linked recessive so if you will check so you have to figure out right whether males are most likely affected or females so just look at it just look at it you know the answer males are more affected only one female is affected otherwise if you will see this chart males are more affected so it is clear that it is x linked recessive so any doubt any doubt so isn't it easy isn't it easy right okay next question uh oh uh oh the answer is marked here bachche the answer is marked here the it's a pyq even so let's discuss that study the pedigree chart of certain family given below and select the correct conclusion which can be drawn from the character so here you can see the parents could not have had a normal daughter for this character okay no we cannot say so we cannot say so as of now the trait under study should not be color blindness still we are not sure about it the male parent is homozygous dominant mm male parent is homozygous dominant not possible male parent is xy right male parent is xy so it definitely the answer is going to be a okay the next question the next question identify the given pedigree type be quick identify the given pedigree type 
identify the given pedigree type. Venkateshan, that particular question, Bache, you just need to tell which conclusion we can draw. So, if you will read all the points, right, right, like they were mentioning that color blindness cannot be there, it can, it can. Okay, so on the basis of that, we have selected the answer. Now, answer this question, Bache, and be quick, huh? speed up. So, I want to see the energy in the chat section, guys. Again, I want to see the energy in the chat section. I don't want to remind it again and again. You are neat aspirant. Right, you should have that enthusiasm. Yes, what should be the correct answer here? So, the very first thing that we need to check is whether it is dominant or recessive. So, what is it? Tell me in the chat section, is it dominant or recessive? Right now, I am not talking about the autosomal dominant and x linked dominant. Is it dominant or recessive? Tell me. Is it dominant or recessive? I want to see the answer in the chat section, guys. Is it, is it dominant or recessive? Is it dominant or recessive? Are you just check it properly now? It is dominant. Isn't it? It is dominant. Here see, parents are normal, next generation is normal. Parents are affected, next generation is affected. Parents are affected, next generation is affected. So, of course, it is dominant. Of course, it is dominant. But in the case of dominant, generation will not be skipped. Generation will not be skipped. Write down. In the case of dominant, the generation will not be skipped. Okay. So, definitely it is dominant and how can you say that it is autosomal dominant? Because male and female, they are equally likely to be affected and you can see this in the pedigree chart. Okay. So, why you people are saying, why majority of people are saying recessive? Why? In the recessive, always remember generation will be skipped. Unaffected parents will have affected children. Right. Affected parents will have normal children, but when it is the dominant trait, generation will never ever be skipped. Where Harry, where, see here, just look at it. Parents are affected, next generation is affected. One of the parent is affected, one of the parents is affected, a parent is affected, next generation is affected. Now here, both of the parents are normal, next generation is normal. Next generation is normal. So how can you say that they skipped the generation? In all that points I mentioned it, I told you this thing. I told you this thing that affected in the case of dominant traits, unaffected parents will have unaffected children. Okay. So, you really need to practice these questions. So, 10 questions you need to practice. So, after the session in the comment section, I want that hashtag 10 questions done. Okay. Hashtag 10 questions done. Okay. Done. Chali. So, the next topic is very easy, very, very, very easy question, sewage treatment. Can we do it very quickly? Sewage treatment, for sure question will come from this part. This particular, this particular topic is from microbes and human welfare, 110 percent question will come from this part. So, sewage treatment, you know that sewage, municipal waste enriched with organic matter. Right, enriched with organic matter. When you talk about the sewage, always remember it is enriched with organic matter. Right, it is enriched with organic matter. Okay, so to understand this topic, what you need to understand? You need to understand BOD. What you need to understand? You need to understand BOD. And what is that BOD? That is biochemical oxygen demand. What is that BOD kids? It is biochemical oxygen demand. We even call it as biological demand. Just imagine. It's very simple. There is no need to cram even. Okay. There is no need to cram even. See, here you have the water and that water is rich in organic matter. Right. That water is rich in organic matter. Basically, what is happening? We have aerobic microorganisms. What do we have Priya Darshini? We have 
aerobic microorganism let's say we have aerobic bacteria aerobic bacteria okay here r excreta okay r excreta r potty is a food for this bacteria this is what you need to remember when we talk about the sewage treatment r excreta r potty is the food for this bacteria right whatever is our waste that is food is for this particular bacteria so now this water is enriched with organic matter so what is going to happen we have the small 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 little little microscopic bacteria here now they want to break that organic matter now they want to decompose that organic matter are you getting my point they want to decompose that organic matter they want to hydrolyze that organic matter they want to break it so for that what do they need they need oxygen isn't it they need oxygen so now you tell me if there will be too much of organic matter don't you think that their demand for oxygen will be more yes don't you think that their demand for oxygen will be more tell me quickly it's very easy so what exactly is the bod biochemical oxygen demand yeah biological oxygen demand it is the demand of oxygen it is the demand of oxygen to decompose the organic matter present in 1 liter of solution by the aerobic bacteria what is this bachche what is this bachche here tell me what is it biochemical oxygen demand is the demand of oxygen by the bacteria so that it can decompose the organic matter present in 1 liter of solution it is the demand in milligram plus liter it is the demand in milligram plus liter are you getting my point so if there will be too much of organic matter the oxygen demand will be more so we can say that if there is high bod means water pollution is even high water is highly polluted water is highly polluted isn't it more bod means more polluted water means more organic matter means more demand for oxygen this is what we need to do so in the sewage treatment ultimately in that process in that plant basically we are just trying to reduce the bod of that water okay bod of that waste water so you know that there are two steps when it comes to the sewage treatment guys isn't it there are two major step that we need to discuss first is the primary treatment second is the secondary treatment also known as biological one is primary also known as physical treatment another is secondary also known as biological treatment why are we saying this is the biological treatment because 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 here the bacteria the living organisms are involved and to revise it very quickly we have this flow chart we have this flow chart this is my favorite flow chart i made it basically okay i made it basically okay done done so see look at it with the help of this flow chart we are going to revise this topic primary treatment also known as physical treatment see you have decided today that you are going to clean right you are going to clean your surrounding what will you do you will go out you will check you okay some trash is placed here and there some plastic packets are there obviously you will take it right you will put it in dustbin like this you will start from somewhere na same is the case here when you people talk about the primary treatment when you people talk about the physical treatment so here there are two steps one is the filtration second is the sedimentation one is the filtration second is the fil uh, sedimentation filtration right one is the filtration second is the sedimentation to filter out something and whatever is remaining we will let it down we, we will let it settle down right we will let it settle down listen to me so we have the sewage water enriched with organic matter enriched with all type of waste so we'll do the filtration first in the physical treatment in the primary treatment after the filtration it will go for sedimentation like see just imagine after the filtration whatever is remaining whatever you know slit and all whatever grit is remaining it will settle down at the base so it will be the sediment it will be the sediment we even call it as primary sludge bachche we even call it as primary sludge this is the result of this is the result of uh, physical treatment what is going to happen bachche first of all filtration will be done and after that sedimentation will be done all the grit sand pebbles they will settle down at the base now whatever is settled down at the base it is making the primary sludge 
we are even calling it as the sediment and whatever water is here bachche we will call it as effluent or even you can even call it as super neated super neated are you getting my point super neated are you getting my point now what will happen so this effluent will pass for the secondary treatment which is also known as biological treatment because we are going to use the microorganisms here right we are going to use the microorganisms here so any doubt here so what type of question can come in your exam they can ask you from the primary treatment which part or which thing will pass to the secondary treatment so what should be the answer anika what should be the answer priya darshini harry biology lover somya anuradha jennifer cherukuri what should be the answer of course it is affluent so affluent from the primary treatment it will pass to the secondary treatment right it will pass to the secondary treatment so you so you guys can check it here affluent from the primary treatment it will pass to the secondary treatment and here bachche this primary sludge or sediment we can use it as the as a compost we can use it for the land filling now in the secondary treatment we are having some tanks okay we are having some tanks that is aeration tanks here is the word here aeration tank jaise let's imagine here you are having some big big tanks right aeration tank so here we are having the source of air air is there means oxygen is available so you are going to pass the effluent to this aeration tank so here in this aeration tank aerobic bacteria is also there so now don't you think that aerobic bacteria is going to digest the organic matter don't you think that organic that aerobic bacteria is going to digest the organic matter yes or no yes or no guys quickly in the chat section and your target for likes it is 500 plus it is 500 plus tell me isn't it obviously obviously so that is why i used to say there is no need to you know memorize everything there is no need to cram ha we need to memorize but there is no need to cram everything we can understand it okay so what is happening here oxygen is available some aerobic bacteria is there that aerobic bacteria will do what it is going to digest the organic matter so when it will digest the organic matter right it is digesting the organic matter for its energy so ultimately what is going to happen bod will come down and this is our main agenda we need to lower down the biochemical oxygen demand we need to lower down the biological oxygen demand are you getting my point are you getting my point so now here mechanical agitation and flocks formation is there now you will be you must be thinking ki what is the meaning of map flocks so flocks are nothing but you can say that some fung fungal filament right some fungus some fungal filament and here some aerobic bacteria are present they are making the flocks right they are making the flocks so basically flock is nothing it is just like a mash work right it is just like some mashes some mash work is there right right are you getting it some mash work is there in that mash work fungal filament and aerobic bacteria is present it is going to feed on that organic matter it will degrade that organic matter so obviously after that what is going to happen energy will be uh, bod will be less so when bod decreases we are going to pass it to the settling tank we are going to pass it to the settling tank so just imagine here you are having the aeration tank here in aeration tank you are having these flocks these flocks are feeding on the these flocks are feeding on the aerobic bacteria right these flocks are feeding on the organic matter now when the bod will come down we will pass this to the settling tank we will pass this to the settling tank here in the settling tank bachche these flocks will settle down at the base because now their duty is over right now their duty is over and from the settling tank right we can use some amount of flock for the next round right as an inoculum we can use it for the next round as an inoculum now from the settling tank bachche this effluent right this effluent we can even take it for tertiary treatment we can put some chemicals in it right or we can directly release it in the rivers or the streams in the rivers or the stream okay okay bachche and here this all that 
whatever is settled down here we used to call it as activated sludge so in need 2020 there was a question once they asked it the activated sludge is the product of what is it the product of aerobic digestion or anaerobic digestion what should be your answer bachche? what should be your answer this activated sludge it is the product of this activated sludge it is the product of what it is the result of what aerobic digestion or anaerobic digestion guys i want to see the answer see spammers are spamming here their speed is too much and what about you people what about you people you people are the you are my lovely lovely students right you need to answer the question you need to answer the question you should spam you should answer it fastly so chat rate should increase come on speed up speed up Chali. so i'll add one thing here whosoever is answering the anaerobic digestion they should slap themselves literally they should slap guys as of now what are we talking we are talking about the secondary treatment biological treatment right here we have the aeration tank in the aeration tank effluent from primary treatment will pass there bacteria are going to feed on that organic matter they are going to decompose that organic matter and after that when bod will decrease we are going to pass all the things to the another tank and we are calling that tank as settling tank so in that tank your sediment is basically the activated sludge so don't you think that it is the product of it is the result of aerobic digestion don't you think it is the result of aerobic digestion activated sludge will form after the aerobic digestion bache after the aerobic digestion okay now this activated sludge will pass to the anaerobic sludge digester now in anaerobic sludge digester because there is no oxygen that flock that bacteria basically it will die okay and we can use it for the as the biogas or manure so it is a PYQ. Whatever question I'm asking, all that questions are previous year question. Or you were not able to answer it. Right? You were not able to answer it. So now be consistent for our sessions. Because whatever topics we are bringing, na, whatever things we are teaching you, na, bache, all that are the most important topics. High weightage topics basically they are. And in my every session, I always mention this thing to you. Bache, it's a PYQ. This is a statement. Many questions used to come from the statement. So please listen to me sincerely. Okay. So whatever effluent is there, as I said, for tertiary treatment or will be released there. So don't you think with the help of this chart, we can revise everything. With the help of this flow chart, we can revise everything. Isn't it? Isn't it? Done. So here you can see the microbes in sewage treatment. So we have discussed. Yes, we have discussed it. You can read it from NCRT. And if there is any doubt, you are free to ask the questions. Okay, put the doubts in the comment section. And the next, next topic is very interesting. We'll be talking about the crab cycle and the electron transport chain. And we are going to learn these topics with the help of tricks. Okay, after this topic, we will be talking about the crab cycle and the electron transport chain. And we will be discussing it with the help of tricks. With the help of that trick, you guys will be able to remember the crab cycle. Just imagine, just imagine. Right, whatever question from crab cycle and ETC, they are possible. We are going to discuss that because students they find uh, they find plant physiology a bit difficult. Now I'm going to make it very easy for you. So now answer it. Answer it. Which of the following is put into anaerobic sludge digester? Quick. Correct. So it is the activated sludge. It is the activated sludge. Next, secondary sewage treatment is mainly a, it is mainly a, of course, again, biological process. Okay. So, water potential we will discuss later. Firstly, let us talk about the crab cycle and ETC. We will discuss water potential and DPD too, but, but crab cycle and uh, your ETC is more important. Now, listen to me.
Guys, tell me in the chat section, respiration is what? Is it catabolic or is it anabolic? Respiration is what? Is it catabolic and anabolic? Whatever topic now we are going to discuss now, four questions you people can expect. So listen to me very carefully. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you many, many, many PYQs today. Tell me, what is respiration? Is it catabolic or is it anabolic? See, we have two things. You know that metabolism is something very important for a living body. Metabolism means all the chemical reactions that are taking place in our body, right? And that chemical reactions are very important for our survival, isn't it? Isn't it? So, in that metabolism, in that chemical reaction, there will be the breakdown as well, there will be the build up as well. There will be the breakdown as well, there will be the build up as well, okay? So, so respiration is a catabolic, although in NCRT at the end, it is mentioned that it is amphibolic but in general we know it very well that it is catabolic now what is this catabolic cata cata means a cut cut means breakdown right breakdown so here in the respiration what is going to happen glucose there will be the breakdown of glucose okay what is going to happen but in respiration there will be the breakdown of glucose and it will result in releasing energy it will result in releasing energy right bache right bache it will result in releasing energy guys what about your uh, what about your energy is it too low is it too low yeah, and there is no need for break i just need your next 15 minutes both the topics will be over because important topics will be discussed right now now important points will be discussed we do not have much time, we cannot discuss them in detail. So, whatever is important for your examination, we will cover that. So, what about your energy? Is it too low? Is it too low? No, na? Then increase your speed, yaar. The chat rate should be high. Like the video, share the video and if you are new, subscribe our channel. Okay? PDF will be shared. Don't worry, PDF will be shared. Fine? Fine, guys. Speed. Speed. Chat rate is very less. It's too less. Okay, now come to this topic. So, you know that there will be the breakdown of glucose which is going to release the energy. So, here the very first step is glycolysis. Very first step is glycolysis. Look at this word. Glycolysis. Glycolysis. Lysis means breakdown. Glycolysis. Glucose breakdown. It means there will be the breakdown of glucose. There will be the breakdown of glucose. Right? There will be the breakdown of glucose. So, it is a common step. It is a common step for both. Again, it is a PYQ. It is a common step for both aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. Whether there is any aerobic bacteria and aerobic organism or anaerobic organism, glycolysis is the key. Glycolysis is the common step for both. So, what is happening in this particular step, bache? Your one glucose molecule, right, it will break down into two pyrubic acid or two pyrubate, whatever you want to write. Right, two pyrubic acid or two pyrubate. This is the point. Okay, right, this is the point. So, glucose to 2 pyrubic acid, this is the first point. Now, see, if this pyrubic acid, again, the point is very important. Again, the point is very important. Question will come from this part. So, glucose to 2 pyrubic acid. So, if oxygen is available, if oxygen is available, just a minute, guys. Akshit, see, did you check my bank account? Huh? Have you checked it? My bank account? Then how can you say that ki if a teacher is leaving one platform and if a teacher is joining another platform, they are doing it for money? Maybe it is the work culture. Maybe we are not comfortable with whatever work we were doing there. Maybe we were, we were, we were not getting the, the freedom to, the, to do the things that we want. So how can you comment something like that? Just for attention, yeah? seriously. We were teaching there, again we are teaching here. There is no difference. Kuch bhi matlab, kuch bhi. Hai na? Vele log. Focus here. So, it is the glycolysis which is the common step. 
it is the glycolysis which is the common step so if oxygen is available if oxygen is available then what is going to happen here this pyruvate will go for the krabs cycle after link reaction and then there will be the electron transport chain then there will be the electron transport chain thank you so much guys for your support right i was teaching on a platform i'm teaching on this platform and there is no i i can i can really tell it you know that there is no you can see how dedicated i am that's all this is the only line that i want to say right now now focus here okay so if oxygen is available pyruvate will go for krab cycle or electron transport chain krab cycle or electron transport chain okay okay and before that there will be one link reaction are you getting this point bachche so before starting the krab cycle and the electron transport chain we should understand this right we should understand this now if oxygen is on available if anaerobic conditions are there then what will happen fermentation will be there fermentation will be there right so our today's target is this part got it this part this is our today's target fine now come to the krab cycle for krab cycle there is no need there is no need to go beyond ncrt you just need to focus on ncrt right you just need to focus on ncrt right so are you ready for the trick are you people ready for the trick right i made this trick with my students in one of the batch i was teaching are you people ready for that ha huh? exactly kathi varan you know na cat okay theek hai so first of all when you talk about the krab cycle it is also known as citric acid cycle right it is also known as citric acid cycle why why do we call it as citric acid cycle what is the need to call it as citric acid cycle the reason is bachche because the first product form is first stable product rather it's it's a question it's mcq guys it's a mcq market market right now market right now it's it's a mcq so here what do we have here 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 the first product form is citric acid that's why we used to call it as the citric acid cycle and it is also known as tricarboxylic acid cycle it is also known as tricarboxylic acid cycle that is t c a y because here you will see many compounds having three carboxylic acid okay you got it many compounds having three carboxylic acid right many compounds having three carboxylic acid that is why we call it as a tca cycle okay okay now this is the point here this is the diagram in the ncrt they can ask you the question from this particular part now what you have to do if you will see pyruvate is a three carbon compound very easy bachche glucose having six carbons if you are going to break it into two obviously you will have two compounds having three three carbon each right having 3 3 carbon each so here pyruvate 3 carbon justified pyruvate 3 carbon very good nilofar bachche excellent bachche nilofar pyruvate 3 carbon justified now from this pyruvate we need to form the acetyl coenzyme a bachche directly pyruvate cannot enter in the krab cycle okay directly pyruvate cannot enter in the krab cycle see you know that mitochondria the power house of the cell isn't it all of you know about the mitochondria the power house of the cell plus a double membrane bound organelle so you know that here we have the outer membrane we have the inner membrane and we have the inter membrane space isn't it we have the outer membrane we have the inter inner membrane we have the inter membrane space these are the enfoldings these are the cristae and these cristae they are having these oxisomes or you can also call them as atp synthase now when you look at this now here you are having the matrix right the circular dna is there the 70s ribosome is also there now what's the point of discussing all that now the site for krab cycle 
this crab cycle is going to take place in the matrix it is going to take place in the matrix and when you talk about the glycolysis it used to take place in cytoplasm all the topics are important guys all the topics are important please listen to me very carefully so basically the pyruvic acid is there in the cytoplasm yes or no the pyruvate formed is in the cytoplasm yes or no furkana jashin preet aishwarya soumya anuradha all of you nilofar answer it quickly so ultimately the cytoplasm that is forming it is the, the pyruvic acid that is forming it is in the cytoplasm yes it is where will crab cycle take place within the matrix so obviously the very first point is we need to transport this pyruvic acid to the matrix we need to transport this pyruvic acid to the matrix yes or no yes or no guys yes or no of course we have to we should so directly that pyruvate cannot enter in the crab cycle it is not capable of so we need to convert we need to convert that pyruvate or pyruvic acid into the acetyl coenzyme a and that acetyl coenzyme a will enter in the crab cycle this is a pyq first question clear first question clear i'm going to give you the points only i'm going to give you the points only first question clear with the help of these points now you'll remember everything only that type of questions will come in the neat exam that i'm sure first point clear now this particular reaction in which pyruvate will be converted to acetyl coenzyme a it is known as link reaction it is known as transition reaction it is known as oxidative decarboxylation it is also known as oxidative decarboxylation it is known as oxidative decarboxylation because here your three carbon containing pyruvic acid will be converted to acetyl coenzyme a having two carbon because one co2 will be released and here the enzyme used is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex second statement that you need to mark from where the question will come in the exam right second statement you need to mark okay so ultimately what is happening your pyruvic acid will be converted to acetyl coenzyme a decarboxylation is here because carbon dioxide will be released carbon dioxide will be released yes it is the gateway reaction excellent bachche so just look at this reaction so here in this reaction your nad positive right here in this reaction your nad positive it will form nadh2 it is getting reduced oxidized nad positive will be reduced it will become nadh2 nicotin nicotin what is it nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide remember this or not both the pyruvic acids will be converted to acetyl coenzyme a jaydeep so what two pyruvates means two acetyl coenzyme a means two times that crab cycle will run from one glucose two times that crab cycle will run that's the point right so this reaction is clear so see any doubt any doubt now the another type of question that is going to come in the neat examination ha huh, we have to discuss that now when you talk about the crab cycle so link reaction is going to convert it into crab cycle uh, into acetyl coenzyme a this link reaction is also taking place here in matrix so pyruvate will enter in the crab cycle but ye whatever enzymes are required for the crab cycle na all of them whatever enzymes are required for the crab cycle na all of them are present in crab cycle all of them are, them are present in matrix but but another third point that you need to note down but succinate dehydrogenase write down but succinate dehydrogenase is present in inner mitochondrial membrane it is present in inner mitochondrial membrane guys please note down kindly note down all the enzymes which are required for crab cycle they are present in the matrix but there is only one exception and that exception is succinate dehydrogenase and that succinate dehydrogenase is not present in the matrix it is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane and it this enzyme acts like a link it links the crab cycle to the electron transport chain it links the crab cycle to the electron transport chain are you getting my point 
are you getting my point? So, it is again MCQ. Clear? Clear? So, whatever I am teaching right now, if you will remember that, definitely you will solve the questions in the NEET examination. 110 percent you will solve. Any doubt? Done. Now, this is the trick for the crab cycle. All of you, this is the trick for the crab cycle. Come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. Come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. All of you type this trick in the chat. In the chat box. I just need your 10 more minutes. The session will be over then. The session will be over then. Just 10 more minutes. Type this trick in the chat box. I know it sounds funny but it is very useful for all of you. Come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. Type it. Come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. Guys, type it. Yeah, type it in the chat section in the and the likes ka target is 500 plus. It's still 495 and what you people are doing just subscribe the channel. Subscribe the channel. Come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. Quick, quick, quick. Chat rate should be high. Chat rate should be high. Chat rate should be high. Quick, come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. Now come to this. Now you must be thinking ma'am, what is this? This is it. Come, C means sit rate. Sit rate. First stable product. I'll tell you how. Right, as of now just remember the names. Then in I isocitrate. In between we have one more compound or uh, is aconitate. We have one more compound aconitate but that is not uh, stable. So, we are majorly focusing on the stable compound. So, come in and and kick and kick is together making alpha ketoglutarate which is 5 carbon containing compound which is 5 carbon containing compound because here in the crab cycle even carbon dioxide will be released. You will see how. So, what is the trick? Come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on. So, C stands for citrate, I stands for isocitrate and kick stands for alpha ketoglutrate which is a 5 carbon containing compound. Then comes the scooty scooter. Then comes the scooty scooter. Succinyl coenzyme A and then comes the succinate. Succinyl coenzyme A, 4 carbon containing compound. I am te teaching you the decarboxylation steps as well. Right. So, succinyl coenzyme A to succinate. Succinyl coenzyme A to succinate. Again, 4 carbon containing compound. Right. Fastly move on. Fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate. Fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate. Right. Here, the citrate, 6 carbon compound. Isocitrate, 6 carbon compound. Alpha ketoketrate, 5 carbon compound. Succinate, Sorry, 4 carbon, uh, ha, alpha ketoglutarate 5 carbon, succinate 4 carbon, fumarate 4 carbon containing compound and these two are also, right. So, is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, you people will get tricks for C3, C4 cycle as well, but as of now tell me, is that clear? Is that clear? So, come in and take scooty scooter fastly move on. So, now see, how you need to draw it? Come to this part. So, come in. Citrate, I, isocitrate and kick, alpha ketoglutrate, scooty scooter, succinyl coenzyme A, succinate, fastly move on, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate. Tell me, is it easy or not? Is it easy or not? Tell me, is it easy or not? Done? It is easy? Of course, it is. So, the another important question that used to come from the scrap cycle is, this oxaloacetate is the first acceptor, bachche. it is the first acceptor, it is the one which is going to accept the acetyl coenzyme, okay, it is the one which is going to accept the acetyl coenzyme, so acetyl coenzyme is having 2 carbons, oxaloacetate is having 4 carbon, 4 plus 2, 4 plus 2, 4 plus 2, quickly in the chat section all of you, all of you, quick, 6 definitely, so citrate, 6 carbon containing compound and it is our first stable compound formed. Done. First stable compound 
formed now from citrate aconitase will make it isocitrate and now from isocitrate alpha ketoglutarate i told you alpha ketoglutarate is alpha ketoglutarate is right it is five carbon containing compound so can i not say that ki here six carbon to five carbon matlab one co2 will be released decarboxylation so this is the step so this is another mcq from this crab cycle this is another mcq from this crab cycle so when this isocitrate will be converted to alpha ketoglutarate because it is five carbon containing compound decarboxylation step will be there nad will form nadh2 this is what you need to remember parallelly okay okay this is what you need to remember parallelly okay now from alpha ketoglutarate there will be the succinyl coenzyme a so here you can see again it is a it is a four carbon containing compound so the carbon dioxide will also be released here and again nad2 nadh2 so yes they are they used to ask in the neat exam that in which reactions nadh2 will form they will ask you when the decarboxylation will occur so this is another important point okay so with the help of trick you people can remember it and yes third point third important question from crab cycle when the succinyl coenzyme a it will be converted to succinate this is the only step in the crab cycle and it is a pyq again where the substrate level of phosphorylation will occur yes this is the only step right where the substrate level of phosphorylation will occur and what is the meaning of substrate level of phosphorylation ultimately bachche here in this step from this gd from first of all the gtp will form right gtp will form okay and gtp will form from this particular substrate done ha wasim sir is here but right now this topic is important and even he is learning it we'll ask questions from him so as of now just focus here ha ah, cat fight just focus here okay so succinyl coenzyme a to succinate the only step in the crab cycle where the substrate level phosphorylation will be done and and, and then comes the fumarate malate it is fastly move on na fastly move on fumarate malate and oxaloacetate that's all okay that's all so here again fumarase is required malate dehydrogenase is required and this is the enzyme which is going to convert uh, succinate into the fumarate this is succinate dehydrogenase again bachche this is the enzyme which is not present in the matrix it is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane again a pyq so this is what you people need to remember now come to ncrt we will just revise that ncrt only okay so you can see here so you have to note down the steps where you know fadh2 will form where nadh2 will form secondly you need to uh, remember the step where the decarboxylation will occur so with the help of that trick everything will be easy for you okay everything will be easy for you and in the paper many times they ask the question that how many atps how many nadh2 will form in one crab cycle sometimes they consider link reaction sometimes they do not so you have to take care of that so you need to read the you need to read the question carefully okay okay so see pyruvic acid plus 4 nadh now you must be thinking that ma'am how 4 nad see 2 nad here sorry 3 nad here 3 nadh basically 3 nadh2 will reduced here and one in the link reaction that is why total 4 only one fadh2 2h2o and one adp that's all done that's all and anything else from crab cycle that you need to know is nothing that's fine okay that's fine so ultimately in mitochondrial matrix all the process will be done and this is what you will get so here you can check 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 the balance sheet so two pyruvate means two times crab cycles means six co2 will be released right two atp will be obtained eight nadh and two fadh2 will be obtained that's all ha one in link reaction you are right you're right and here you guys can see some questions like expected question the substrate that will enter is acetyl coenzyme a the first acceptor is oxaloacetate which is a four carbon containing compound first product is the citric acid and there is one more pyq that how 
how the products of you know uh, how the intermediates of uh, crab cycle they help in the formation of other products so you can see it here that like acetyl coenzyme a it's a raw material for fatty acids steroid chlorophyll and carotenoids alpha ketoglutarate it used to form the amino acid glutamate oxaloacetate it used to form aspartate pyrimidine alkaloid and this succinyl coenzyme a will form cytochrome and chlorophyll so this is what you need to remember okay so now a uh, very disturbing element is there in the studio all of you know the name of the disturbing element can you guess yeah you are disturbing element we seriously we ha we have a we have a disturbing element in the studio right now can you tell me ozi can you tell me you disturbed my session today we will have a fight for sure ask question from wasim sir are he will not be able to answer any question i don't want to insult him again i literally don't want to insult him again acha i am the disturbing element seriously oh my god jalwa jalwa koi jalwa nahi hai ha ah. have some jalwa in the chats guys <laughs> he's not jalwa he's disturbing element bache nad2 atp conversion will be there in etc okay that is your electron transport chain i'll provide this pdf see i mentioned all the complexes the name of the complexes you need to remember so it is basically na d su c d it's bad but theek it will help c2 bas for complexes this is what you need to remember these are the complexes of electron transport chain one more complex is there that is your atp synthase but that is not literally the part of that chain that is more towards the matrix that is in the matrix basically okay okay so na d su c d c2 this is how i remember na d means nadh dehydrogenase su c d succinate dehydrogenase the enzyme which is there in the crab cycle okay so it is linking both of them the crab cycle and the etc so th this particular enzyme is more towards the inner side but it is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane and cytochrome bc1 complex cytochrome c oxidase so this is what you need to remember okay and then this flow so i'll cover it later ठीक है आई कवर इट लेटर डोंट वरी अबाउट दैट सो आई हैव एडेड रूट्स फॉर द इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट दैट व्हेन इट इज द एन ए डी एच इट विल गिव इट्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू एफ एम एंड देन एफ ई एस देन दिस क्यूनोन ओके देन साइटोक्रोम बी एफ ई एस सी वन सी ए ए थ्री एंड फाइनली ऑक्सीजन इज द फाइनल एक्सेप्टर इट इज द फाइनल एक्सेप्टर सो बोथ द रूट्स आर मैंशन यूर बच्चे आई शेयर द पी डी एफ एंड दैट्स ऑल दैट्स ऑल नाउ sir you come here you come here i'll ask some questions from you oh done so i hope you all enjoyed the session okay do like do share do subscribe you come to you come here na i hope session at 7 after 15 minutes tell them ha huh, you have session after 15 minutes na you should tell them i'm not going to tell them they know it no it's your session you have to come here no <laughs> you disturb my sessions always you disturb me hello. all the time hello what's up how are you guys i'll see I'm you all i'm not good they are good but i'm not good i'll see you all exactly at 7 okay there's a special surprise coming up for all of you right so be there on time yeah <laughs> baki ambika ma'am she'll be joining me in that session also right Seriously? both of yes yes both of us I'm will be both of us will be announcing a special thing for all of you Right, just stay tuned. Like after fifteen minutes, we'll catch up. We'll catch up again. Okay. Okay. okay just answer one question. Mm. If I'll do the D phosphorylation of ATP, what will I get? अरे मुझे नहीं पता है यार. <laughs>